Hey Floss Tubers, it's Katie the Stash Queen coming to you on Monday, November the 30th. It's the last day of November. Ah! Hope everyone has had a wonderful stitchy week. Um, my week last week was really kind of weird. Um, not bad, just it was way busier than I anticipated it was going to be. We had Thanksgiving with my side of the family, we had Thanksgiving with my husband's side of the family, but that involved driving down to the Houston Galveston area and our days were packed and everything was busy getting up to this week and there were a couple of days where migraines were plaguing me and it was just it was a weird stitching week um so I don't have as much progress to show this week as I normally do because I'd already planned on it being kind of a weird week with going down to Houston anyway but that's okay um I still got progress I still got stuff to show don't worry about that. Um, I did want to say thank you to everyone who had provided feedback uh, in my last haul heavy video. Um, I'm going to start from now on making haul the last thing that I show on the videos. Um, I didn't know that that was something that would please a lot of people. I figured those who like haul videos are going to watch that way anyway. And those who don't, you can watch until the end the, before the haul starts and there you go. So. I'm going to go ahead and start doing that moving forward. Um, if there are any other suggestions or anything else that you guys have, feel free to let me know. I'm happy to try to take things into consideration as I can. Um, again, got a lot of stuff going on this week. Uh, it's the last day of November. Christmas is right around the corner. We got home late last night from Houston. It was an awful drive home. It usually takes us about five hours to get home. It took us close to seven yesterday because of nasty weather and horrible drivers. And I look like a mess, but oh well. We didn't get to sleep until really late. I feel bad for the teachers today <laughs> with the kids. Um, but, you know, such is life. It, it goes on. My goal this week, I have... Um, I woke up this morning with my back really, really hurting. So I haven't done a lot yet today, um, but I think after this video, before I get the kids up, or go get the kids at school, I our Elf on the Shelf comes tomorrow. We need to make sure things are ready for her. Uh, so I have to find the box in with all of our Christmas stuff that has the advent calendar that she fills every year. Um, one good thing about it being Christmas decorating time, though, is that I'll be able to pull out some of my FFOs and show you guys whenever I have them pulled out. Probably next week's video, because my goal is to get everything decorated by the end of this week. So stockings and a couple ornaments that I've done. I'll show off an ort ornament for people, um, just to kind of get an idea of what I do with my orts. Um, but yeah, so you guys will get to see quite a bit of that stuff this week, too. Frosted Pumpkin announced its annual stitch along for 2016 last week. It's a traveling, it's, they're calling it Pumpkin Passport, and it's a traveling around the world series. Um, I got the pattern PDF, and I've or, and I ordered the two needle minders, of course. Should have ordered the Halloween needle minder when it was out, the limited edition one for Frosted Pumpkin. I should have ordered that one. I didn't. I wish I had. If anyone knows where I can get it out there, let me know. I'll be happy to pay for it and get it so I can get my needle minor collection from Frosted Pumpkin going, but oh well. Um, Clouds Factory hasn't officially announced theirs yet. It is also travel themed. I will be doing both. Theirs is postcards from around the world. They've given a sneak preview already. Venice is supposed to be January's uh, bit, I believe. Um, but I reached out to them last week to find out when they were going to be releasing because we knew Frosted Pumpkin was releasing. And they said first week of December, first or second week of December. So that's this week or next. So because that is the last piece that I need at this point to kit up for um, the January year of starts, I'm going to give it to the end of this week and see what happens and maybe I'll be able to get that video done for you guys. Other than that, um, rambling on and on, let's go ahead and get started with the rest of the video. First off, I have my weekly Q&A. Thanks everyone who asked for uh, asked questions this week in the comments. Um, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to leave them in the comments below or send me a message and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, if you send me a message on Facebook, I'm not going to include it here just because I usually answer those a whole lot faster. Um, so if you want to be, uh, if you want to have your question answered on the Q&A, make sure you answer or you send it in the comments below or send me as a YouTube message because I do go through those books. Sorry, my hair is all crazy today. Um, I do look through all of those and write them all down before I do these videos. So anyway, first question, Rosemary Miller asked if I could print out the electronic patterns to show you guys with my whips. 
Unfortunately, I'm going to have to say no to that. One, I don't have a color printer. Um, two, I do them electronically. So printing out any part of it's kind of a waste. Um, and three, because our printer is only black and white and it's primarily used for school and for work, we, I, I don't want to print something that I'm not really going to use beyond showing on a video. Um, because ink is really expensive. And so we try to minimize what we actually print on there. If you want to see, um, what I can do is if you want to see what the electro electronic patterns are each week, um, I can put a link to those patterns below in the com in the description box. So you can click on the link and go see what the pattern is um, as well. Plus I do have my electronic video, which I need to update with some recent purchases. Um, probably do that at the same time that I'm doing my January video, but the electronic pattern video has all of my electronic patterns, some that are whips, some that are haven't started yet, some of them that are finishes. So you can also look at that as well. But I, I will go ahead and start leaving in the, in the description box below if I have an electronic pattern that um, I can for that week to show you guys so you guys can go take a look. Hopefully that'll help instead. Uh, Rosemary Evandra had some question about Hades um, and she asked, how do you know which pieces go along the top because Hades don't have a page layout portion of their patterns. Um, and do I do I tape pages together or do I work page by page? I work page by page. Um, and how I know which ones go on the top. The first page one of the pattern will always be the top left corner of a hade. Um, and if you look at each page of a hade, the top left corner gives you the page number and it usually says page one, the name of the title and the, the designer of it. In the top right corner, and I'm this is my left and right, sorry, stage left, stage right. But in the top right corner, when you're looking at the page, there's a number in parentheses, and that is the number of the page that goes next to it. So on page one, there's a two up in the right-hand corner. On the bottom left corner, there is another number in parentheses, and that is the page that goes right beneath that page. So the pattern that I looked at for my example, which I can't show because obviously hates are all patterns, it was, I was looking at my Angel of Compassion um, Hade pattern, and it had a one, a two, a five at the bottom left, because page five goes underneath the page one there. If you have a lot more, it may be a page 10, it may be a page eight, whatever that number is below it, and the bottom left corner is the page directly below that page. And then on the bottom right corner is the, is the page beneath that diagonally. So like, it, it'll, here's page one that you're actually looking at. It'll tell you page two goes next to it, page five goes beneath it, page six goes diagonally below it. And that's how I follow it. And I I have one hade that I'm doing from the middle out because it's a different type. It's not a full coverage hade. Um, it's my Flames of Desire, and I'll show that when it comes up in the rotation. But usually I start on page one, and then I go over. Now, how do I know where I'm at the end of the row? Usually the last page either is not a full page, like it's only a few columns and you can tell that's the end of that row, or you just look at following the numbers and there's not a number in the top right corner. So I hope that helps. No, I don't tape them together. I don't tape any of my patterns together, to to be quite honest. Um, that's just too much. <laughs> and I just work at a page at a time and that's just easier for me. Um, Carilli, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Campbell, asked, how do I store my specialty threads? Um, I have a video that I will include the link on to the bottom below. Let me make sure, link video notes, um, that I showed of my floss storage unit that holds all of my specialty floss that I am not using as well as my old DMC, or my, not my old, my vintage DMC. Um, and she also asked if I bobbinate when I'm using it. It depends on the floss. Uh, Jotteries, yes. Dragonfly Lotus, yes. Moe's, yes. Um, Weeks, no. Gast, no. Classic Colorworks, no. And because usually those come on the cards and if they're pre-cut, it's a pain to um, bobbinate when they're pre-cut threads. Perfectly fine to use, but not convenient for bobbinating. Um, so I usually just pull whatever I'm using from the... Actually, hold on a sec. Let's see. If I can show an example off screen here. One more sec. Oh, let's get over here to one of the ones that I had recently bought. Okay, here, sorry. My unit's right over there. Okay, so this is an example. This is a Gentle Arts thread. 
um, with the, the card comes like that with a thread hanging from the bottom and then you've got this one piece up at the top. What I would do, and I'll take this apart to show, say, you know, I needed to use this color, pull out the ones and see Gentle Arts is pre-cut. I think Classic Color Works and Weeks both are as well, but so it only goes in strands like this, right? So, and I'm not gonna pull out two strands, but say I was, this was two strands for sake of pretending here. And I was used it on my piece and I had stuff left over. The part that I didn't use goes back on the bottom. And I thread it through. And then the part that's left over, pretend this is leftover pieces, because I didn't, I should have grabbed one to show. I'll put that up at the top. So I know that the next time I pull this color out, that part of the top's already been used and I can go ahead and finish off that piece. That's what I do with these ones. Um, the uh, Dinky Dyes All Bobinate, really if it's, if it's not pre-cut, I'll bobinate. If it is pre-cut, I won't. It's pretty much the way it, it works for me. And then they all go in these little cards. The unit gives a little bit better detail, but it's a modified floss away bag version. Name of the pattern, or name of the floss, if it's what kind of floss it is, and or the brand, kind, name of the floss, put in a bag, put an ABC order in its proper box. Um, I'll put a link to my video for my floss storage below that gives a little bit more clear details. Uh, Trixie Stitches asked if I've had issues signing up the Clouds Factory website. No. Um, <clears throat> I ordered the, the Zodiac sampler back in February and that's when I made my accounts and I haven't had any issues with it. I used it this past weekend when she was having her Black Friday sale. Didn't have any issues with it. If you're having problems signing up, I would honestly recommend going to the Clouds Factory Facebook page for the company, not the, the Stitch Along page, but the, the Clouds Factory Facebook page and messaging them. They're really good about getting back to those messages and seeing if they can help walk you through it if you're still having issues. Hopefully you can get that fixed. Uh, Sarah Richards uh, asked one question that was actually also asked by Stephanie Stitches, how do I bead with a hoop? And then Sarah asked an additional question, oh no, uh, Stephanie asked, no, sorry, these are all beading questions, just kidding. Sorry if you hear things falling in the background. This is keeping presents behind us. And when we came home yesterday, there are quite a few packages on the front porch, even though I asked for all the packages to be delivered like no earlier than today, but whatever. <laughs> and the kids are like, oh, mommy, look, you got stitching stuff. Sure, it's all stitching stuff. No, it's back there. Kids know better than to come in here without me. Anyway, sorry, Sarah Richards and Stephanie Stitches both asked how I bead in a hoop. Um, between the issues of not wanting to crush beads and um, excuse me, the beads getting loose and all that sort of thing. I leave beading until the very, very end of a project. I will do all of the stitching or all of the X's, all of the back stitching, all of the metallics, everything else first before I will do beading. When I do beading on a piece, that is a risk that you have to watch out for, um, for not crushing beads with a hoop. I don't have an issue with tension because you, you saw in my last video how I was popping bottle caps everywhere. Um, the, the, Tension is fine. I usually go through beads twice to secure them. Um, so I've never had an issue after I've beaded a section and moved the hoop. I will either work from the top down or the bottom up, depending on what makes the most sense. Um, same thing left to right or right to left. It, I will pull a piece out of a hoop entirely when I'm done stitching it, lay it down, look at the pattern where the beads are and figure out my, and it's never the same way twice. With a chatelaine, I'm not even sure how I'm gonna do the beading on the chatelaine yet because I haven't sat down to look at how the beads are required. Um, I don't wanna crush beads with a hoop, so I will pick a section. If I'm gonna work, let's say I'm gonna work from right, well, okay, left to right and up to down. Let's just say for a pattern, that's what I picked. My hoop would go in the top, the furthest top left, highest place where there are beads, and I would work on focusing on the beads in that section. I would not get every bead in there, meaning I'll leave some room around the perimeter of what is inside the hoop so that when I move the hoop, I will have enough space to bead the part that I didn't bead and not crush the beads. Does that make sense? Um, 
so that, you know, say there's a ton of beads in the middle and then there's like scattered beads on the outside. I'll do the scattered beads where I know the hoop's not going to hit next. And then I'll move the hoop to make sure that I don't, to capture the part that I didn't get and not crush any of those other beads. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit of manipulation. Uh, there will be a few times where I'm just not going to be able to do a certain part of a piece in a hoop and I'll just beat it by hand then. That's not a problem either. Um, but I do try to get the majority of the beads done in the hoop. And it's really just a matter of paying attention. Um, I'll maybe even use a smaller hoop. I typically use a 10 inch hoop for everything, but I may go, depending on how the beading is, may pick, pull out my seven inch hoop or my five inch hoop and just use that to bead in the sections too. It, it's beading, I don't find beading to be difficult. I, I love beading, beading's fun. But it is a matter of being very careful when you are beading, not only to make sure you're beading properly, like putting the right beads in the right place and securing them down, but to make sure you're not crushing things. And so it's just, it's, it's just a very deliberate process of evaluating and making sure I'm not, when, the biggest thing is to make sure when I move the hoop that I'm not going to crush the beads. And if there's somewhere, if there's no way I can use that hoop without crushing the beads, then I'll beat in hand. And that's the way it'll go. I'll let you know when we get to the Chatelaine how it works. We're ways off from that from any of my chatelines. And then Sarah also asked if I ever waking up feeling like, blah, sure, today. <laughs> About my rotation and stitching, no, generally not. Um, there are some days that there are some pieces that I'm like, I really don't want to work on this today. And that'll sometimes be those days where you'll see me come up in my weekly page and say, I had the leftovers and I had, you know, the holdovers this week. And that happens. Um, I, I've got enough health issues, life issues, other things that are stressful, um, things that I deal with, that there are some mornings where I wake up, I'm like, I don't want to get up out of bed. I just want to stay here. But it usually has nothing to do with stitching. Um, if I ever start feeling blah about my stitching, that's the time to evaluate what I'm doing. Is it just the piece that I'm having a hard time with? In which case I might try to just, if it's like my, my daily rotation piece, try to push my way through it with a wine and whip for that day. Um, if it's I'm getting overwhelmed by the rotation or I'm getting too bored, then it's a matter of looking at and seeing what do I need to do to spice it up. But it, I just deal with it as I get through it. Uh, Shirley Hickman asked if I own a lot of charts that call for variegated floss. There are several that I have that use like Weeks or Gentle Arts or Classic Color Works. Um, for things like Most Sale or Jottery or Dragonfly Lotus, no, because those are independent um, designers, thread designers. So I, I learned a couple of years ago to get over my fear of not using colors specifically called for in a pattern. Um, first piece I ever did that on was the once a time, once upon a time sampler from Frosted Pumpkin Citry. I wanted to, I had all this floss that I had purchased and I wasn't using it. So I, the, it was a pattern, their their patterns just lend themselves to making substitutions with colors and it not negatively impacting the entire piece. So I sat down and I switched out colors and I loved it. And I've been doing it on almost every Frosted Pumpkin pattern and almost every Class Factory pattern ever since. Um, there are some patterns that just lend themselves to, as I, and I've said this before, to substituting out colors. Um, and so if the, if I look at a pattern and I, the mood strikes me, I switch them out. And that's not even limited to switching out for variegated colors, too. If you go, I mean, there are some people out there who have done gorgeous conversions of mirabilias. Like, there's, there's uh, for the pattern red, there are people out there who have made it all purple. They've made it all blue. I have talked about the substitute or converting Raven Queen into the Dove Queen and changing everything from black to white. Um, there's, it's just a matter of, you know, letting your own creativity shine through and remembering that even though a pattern calls for certain colors, if you don't want to use them, you don't have to. It's not like the cross stitch police are going to come get you. It's not like the designer is going to say, you're never allowed to work on one of my designs again. Um, it, do your own thing. Have fun with it. Um, Sally or Stephanie Stitches also asked, what do I do with my huge projects with the extra fabric? I just put the fabric to the side. Um, for all the grime guards that are out there for Q-snaps, someone needs to start making grime guards for hoops. I have been told that grime guards for Q-snaps can work for hoops as well already in the current dimensions, but I 
haven't sat down and figured out what dimension Q-snap needs to work with my ten-inch hoop because it's a different setup. Um, it's a circle; it's not a square. But you know, I would be all for that market, or at least advertising if you're already making Q-snap covers, how what hoop size it would work for as well. But usually, on the ones that I have bigger pieces, I just fold the fabric up and push it to the side. I just work around it. I mean, there's nothing special. It's just work around. Um, then Debbie Hilliard asked if we announce sales like Rainbow Stitchery or all that in Stitch Mania. Yes and no. Um, Garrett and I have a very firm belief that we don't want Stitch Mania to become an advertising group. So we actually have a rule that vendors, um, that, and we have several vendors in our group, meaning people who make their own patterns or make their own fabrics or make their own flosses. We don't let them advertise about themselves in our groups. Now, we are say, we we are all well aware of me and my uh, love for enabling people, and that is something that a lot of people in Stitch Mania share. We don't have an issue if a member comes in and says, hey, I saw this sale on this site, go and check it out. Um, we did a lot of that this past weekend with, and this past weekend was the one exception that Garrett and I have decided to make for allowing vendors to post because of Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, and Cyber Monday. But that is the only exception for vendors posting in their group. If someone sees a sale and they want to share it, we let them share it. But we don't keep track of every website that's out there. We don't keep track of every sale that is out there. So if we don't see it, we don't necessarily announce it. Um, stuff like Rainbow Stitchery, my, they're almost done because I think they're closing the doors at the end of this uh, December. Um, those sites or a lot of the, a lot of the sites, a lot of the vendors, the way I found out about sales and stuff is because I'm members of their Facebook page or I'm members of their mailing lists. And that's a good way. I mean, mailing lists kind of fill up your junk mail, admittedly. But if you if you like their Facebook pages, the, a lot of them will announce sales and deals and stuff on Facebook too. So we don't we never turn down the ability to enhance someone else's stash in Stitch Mania. But focusing on advertising is not what Stitch Mania is all about. So anyway, those are my Q and A's this week. Like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer them. Um, I have a lot of fun answering the questions. It's a lot of, it's one of my favorite parts of the week. So, week in review. Like I said, wonky week. Um, I only worked on one pattern in my daily rotation portion. Um, but I still worked on uh, most of my other daily pieces that I work on as well. So, let's show them off. The one piece in my weekly rotation or my daily rotation that I worked on last week was my Wedding Sampler by Carolyn Manning. This is on a 14 count crystal fresco in Picture This Plus and it was backstitching is what I focused on. Worked on more backstitching in that corner. So, I mean, it doesn't look like a whole lot of difference unless you look at it up close. I was working on a lot of backstitching in that area. It takes a while, all this backstitching, because I want to do all of the backstitching on these two pages before I do the roses that are on the next two pages. And I haven't decided if I'm gonna do the text in the middle yet or not before I move on. We'll get to that later. So this was the only piece in my daily rotation pieces that I actually worked on this week. Because like I said, life happened. You know, just between packing and getting ready for going out of town and two Thanksgivings and, um, having, you know, dealing with other stuff that's come up. It's just not a lot of that stitchy time to go on. Um, I did work on my other patterns though this week. Um, this one is of course Garrett's design. Let's pull, yeah, it's, this is holding thread in the back there, but I worked on this block in Garrett's design. So I have an apple, my dear, and I was working on this skirt, which is being done in black cherry and H2O mulberry six silks from Dragonfly Lotus. Here's the whole piece as it stands right now. So we're working on it. My goal this week is to finish this square. I want to have this square done by the time you guys see this knit on Sunday, or at least close enough that I can finish it on Sunday. 
because I would like to have this piece done um, for Garrett so that he can do what he wants to do with, with selling the piece, but also because, oh, come on, it starts coming up. If I can get some finishes, that's a good thing. Oh, and this is being done on 32 Lugana and Sand from Picture This Plus, but I think I've mentioned that like every week. Um, and I'll be continuing to work on this and the next two pieces for the next week as well. This is my Magical Creatures calendar from Clouds Factory for the Magical Creatures Stitch Along that I'm a part of. I'm doing this one on 32 Opal Belfast and Diva from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And the border is being done in Ramona Silk from Mo's Sale. Here's the whole piece. Now... I had to do some major frogging earlier this week. Like I had the entire corner up here done, which I've started getting to again, but I had the whole corner up here done, but realized I was off over here by like three or four stitches. So I had to frog all of the, it was a pain, but I saved most of the floss, didn't put a hole in my fabric. 15 minutes a day, I should get this done this week because there's not a whole heck of a lot left. And then I can put it to the side and wait until January to start the actual piece. And then I'm also working on the Doctor Who clock by Clouds Factory for my son, 30 minutes a day. Um, I'd like to have this done by Christmas. I am not pushing myself to have it done by Christmas. If it's done by Christmas, great. If it's not, that's fine. Not a big deal. Um, but I am doing this one on 32, uh, 32 Opalugana Jewel from Under the Sea Fabrics. And you can see, I'm trying to look through the fabric here. So you can see it, I have done one, two, three, four, five, and I've started on doctor number six. Aren't they cute? I'm really enjoying working on this piece. It's a lot of fun. So yeah, if I can get it done by Christmas, great. If not, I'm not worrying about it. I also worked on um, the Mediterranean Flavors Stitch Along piece for uh, the five F stitch long and stitch mania. Uh, because of the traveling and stuff, I didn't get as much time to work on it as I wanted to. So I extended it to work on it today as well. So I'm not gonna show it to you guys today because the next stitch along and stitch mania starts tomorrow. And that's the winter wonderland one. So I'm going to go back to those of you who've been watching my channel for a while will know that when we have stitch alongs and stitch mania, I always do a pattern for seven days. October, November, I haven't done that because, or I've done that, but I haven't done separate videos because either the days fell on the weekend and it was on Sunday that I was showing you guys to do it, or like in October, I worked on Raven Queen all month, so I just showed you guys in my weekly updates. This time, December 1st is on Tuesday. So starting tomorrow for the month of December, I will come back every seven days on Tuesdays and show you guys my status for those stitch alongs. So, um, on, so tomorrow I will show you the end of the Mediterranean flavors. I will say, I don't think I'm going to eke out a finish on that today simply because of what I'll talk about here in a few minutes, but I'll start coming back on Tuesdays and showing you my stitch along progress for the next stitch along and stitch mania. So come back tomorrow for another video. Otherwise, here is my, my here are my whips for the week. It's the 30th. The last frame of Storytime Sampler from Frosted Pumpkin Citry comes out this evening. It's bittersweet. I'm excited because it means I'll finish this piece tonight. But at the same time, you know, it, it's always kind of bittersweet when you come to the end of an annual rotation or an annual stitch along. So here is my Storytime Sampler from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery as it stands today. It is on 28 Jobelin and Melody from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And I'm using Flosses and Silks from Mo's Sale. So where that blingy Alice is, the needle minder from Minding My Minders, um, that's where the last frame will go. I'm thinking, I haven't seen if there's a preview because I was kind of offline all day yesterday, but if there hasn't been, uh, the two stories that I think would make the most sense are either a Christmas Carol by um, Dickens or The Night Before Christmas, like the traditional one. Um, the, because it's December and those are both classic stories and I think they'd work perfectly in that frame. But we'll see what happens. When you guys see this on Sunday, it will be completed. So, yay! 
That would be nice. And the next Frosted Pumpkin Stitch Along, the annual one, the first piece is supposed to come out January 15th, which is supposed to have the first city and like all the frames set up. So when that comes out, I'll be starting it. Um, then tomorrow is the 1st of December, which means the last sign for the Walking Through the Stars Zodiac Sampler by Clouds Factory will be coming out as well. Which means I will also have this one finished on Sunday when you guys see it next. Two finishes. Yay. Granted, they're just being replaced by their 2016 counterparts, but that's okay. So here is where we stand. This is my Walking Through the Stars Zodiac sampler that is done on 32 Belfast in Black Magic from Under the Sea Fabrics. Isn't it pretty? And my Gemini Minders from Minding My Minders. So, yep. I'm going to try to have this. It, these, this frame always takes me a couple of days to do. I'm going to try to have it because it comes out tomorrow. It would be my goal to have that frame done by Wednesday. So do it Tuesday and Wednesday and be done with it, which is how I determine the rest of my whips for the week this week. But as you all know, having watched me so far this year, this piece may take longer than two days to do. So the rest of this, um, the, these pieces for the week, who knows if I'll actually get to them or not. We'll see. Because actually they're holdovers from last week. You just saw them last week. Um, First one is Lizzie Kate's ABCs of Parenting. Yay. And I'm doing this on 32 Lugana in Earthen from Picture This Plus. And like I said, I just showed this to you guys last week because it got held over since I didn't get a whole lot of daily rotation stitching done this week. But here's where we stand with it at this point. And the Blingy Texas Minder is from Gina's Unique Boutique. So... If I am able to get the Zodiac done by Wednesday, this will be the piece I work on on Thursday. But who knows? We'll see what happens. If my rotation works out the way I hope it does. Um, Friday then would be the American Flag Quilt Sampler by Rosewood Manor, which I also showed you guys last week and didn't get to, but oh well. And this one is being done on a 28 count even weave that's a beigey color. And here's where we are at this point. And it's my Outlander Minder from Minding My Minders, who's having a sale all week. Go check them out. So yeah, we'll see. If anything gets hold over, it'll be this piece because Saturday, I didn't get to work this past Saturday on my Doctor Who Exploding TARDIS because I didn't bring it with me to Houston because I didn't want to mess with figuring out what colors I needed to bring and all that. Duck Katie, that pattern doesn't fit in here. Um, but here it is. This will be the piece I work on on Saturday. It is my Doctor Who Exploding TARDIS from Sprite Stitch. And it's just being done on 18 count Ada. So I can kind of show you what that piece is looking like because it's kept in my so much to love bag. That's kind of what it looks like. So I'm actually not going to, I'll see if I can leave a cop a link to this one. Um, the site that it came off of, it's, I, I think it may just be the pattern that I can link to, which case I'm not going to link to it. I mean, it's a free pattern, but I'm not going to do that if it's just the pattern. Um, and then of course the uh, story time sampler and the zodiac. I don't know what they're going to be yet, <laughs> so I'm not going to link to those either. Um, so this week I don't think I'll have any digital links below. But you know when I do other Clouds Factory or other Frosted Pumpkin or any of the other many 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 um, patterns that I have beneath or have saved electronically, then I'll put those down below. So I've already mentioned that I will be doing another video tomorrow for the Stitch Along update, the end of the five Fs and the start of Winter Wonderland. So feel free to come back tomorrow for um, that video. And then um, I also already mentioned that I'm just waiting on Clouds Factory to, to release their pattern or their information for the salve for the postcards around the world for next year so that I can know which fabric and stuff I'm going to use and I can show off the video I can do my January, crazy January video for that. 
Um, other than that, all thing I all that I have left today is haul. So if you're gonna skip the haul video, that portion of the video, that's fine. I'll see you guys next time. Otherwise, kick back. We got a little bit of haul, not nearly as much as last week. Sorry, though I did sales Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday. There are some purchases that are coming. Are we shocked? Especially with the needle minder places, because oh my god, good sales on at my needle minders and nifty needle nannies. So the first thing I got this week, um, Liz from Dragonfly Lotus actually had posted that she was um, giving away, or not giving away, selling bags that were uh, of flosses that were like the odds and ends, the last little bits of flosses, either from test dyes that she had tried or ends of skeins that had already, all the rest of it had been purchased or pieces from discontinued lines and so on and so forth. That if you bought this little pack, you'd get at least 50 yards of floss, but it would be, you, it's kind of, it was a grab bag. You didn't know what you'd get. So it came all cute and wrapped up. It had a bow and a tag. So if you wanted to buy it for the stitcher in your life, you could. I, of course, have already opened it and looked at it. But here are the flosses. Let me grab just something white in case we need to pull it against it. And they're so pretty. And I think she realized that I like the the mulberry silks, working with her mulberry silks the best. I love her, her wools too, but mulberry silks are my favorite of her stuff because she sent lots of mulberry silks. Anyway, here is what I got. This is Blurple. It's a five yard skein of BFL wool in a pretty, pretty purple color. This one is from her mulberry collection. It's called Sour Lime and it was a 10 yard stain of mulberry silk. This one is also mulberry silk. It is a 10 yard skein of Bird of Paradise. Very pretty orange. This one is Lemon Ice. It was a, another 10 yard skein of mulberry silk in the pretty yellow. This one is Silver Bangles. It is a 10 yard skein of mulberry silk and it's silver gray. It's really pretty. Sorry about the reflection. <laughs> and then this last one was my favorite and I was, it, it must be one she doesn't make anymore. Liz, if you watch this, make this color. It is gorgeous. Um, this is a five and a half yard skein of mulberry silk in Nebula. Look at this. Let me just do this even closer here. Look at this. It is so pretty. Liz, make more. Please, pretty, pretty, please. So yeah, that's what came in my little grab bag. I'm so excited. Now, I will say most of these colors won't end up in Garrett's design simply because, not because I couldn't find places to use them. I could find places to use them. Aren't they pretty? But because uh, some of these aren't made anymore, I don't want to put a skein in Garrett's design that no one else can access. So. But it will be going in my stash. Thank you, Liz. Then I had some needle minders, of course. The first one is actually, because I went and purchased the two needle minders that are coming for the Frosted Pumpkins, their limited edition Frosted Pumpkin Stitch Along ones, the two that are coming for the Stitch Along, and because I have a lot of Frosted Pumpkin patterns in my rotation schedule for Year of Starts, I did buy this one needle miner that I had seen at the Cottage Needle several times, um, but just hadn't purchased. And it's the cute little pumpkin. It's a wooden needle miner. It's the pumpkin from Frosted Pumpkin. And they also sent along with it a size 26 bow and needle, which I think is just sweet. Works well for me. So yeah, got that. Then I got another one of my orders from Nifty Needle Nannies. I just can't seem to stop ordering from there which I know Julie's happy about. <laughs> so here's the first one that I got. Um, it's a blingy Eiffel Tower, a Minecraft uh, face, and then a chocolate cupcake. I got the Paris or the Eiffel Tower one after the tragedy in Paris. And I will probably use it for my, um, the Clouds Factory annual stitch long. Minecraft, because my kids love Minecraft, and chocolate cupcakes, because duh. Then this one is Captain America, Batman, and Spider-Man. And then the fourth one that didn't fit on there was Hawkeye. I need to get some more. I don't need, I want. They're so cute. 
And then Julie, I don't have them here because the kids have absconded with them. Julie was so sweet and sent um, a minder for each of my children because we helped identify some of the characters in the kids' shows because my kids watch them. Um, so she sent a Jake and the Neverland Pirates one for my son. And then she sent one of the blue, elf, she calls it the blue elf on her Facebook page, but it's the brownie elf from Girl Scouts to my daughter who is a junior Girl Scout. And she's so excited because she has a troop meeting on Friday and she's going to be bringing it to show off to everybody. So she's very, very excited. So thank you, Julie. You are such a doll. Love your minders. They are awesome. Then I had my two fabric as a month clubs came in last week. This first one is from Under the Sea Fabrics. It is a 32 linen in autumn. It's a really pretty, just neutral color. Very, very pretty. I like it very much. I have orders coming from both of them because they both had sales recently. So, yay. Then this one, okay. I'm working on reading Game of Thrones. I have not watched Game of Thrones. So if I mispronounce this name, I'm sorry, all you Game of Thrones fans. Cersei, C-E-R-S-E-I, character from Game of Thrones. This is my my hand-dyed fabric from Stephanie. It is a 28-count Jobelin. But, oh, it's, it's not even showing how beautiful blue it is. On the camera, it's showing more gray. Let's see if I can show... Oh, that's better representation of the color. Uh, where is the light? How are we gonna get this on? It's just oh, it's so pretty. See if you see it. That that's kind of a better representation of the color. It's just this really pretty blue. But here is the whole piece. You can see the modeling on it. Again, it's just stunningly gorgeous as always. Leslie and Stephanie just can do no wrong in my book. So I'm sure I'll find a piece for that. And then had a couple of patterns that came in. Um, I mentioned, I think a couple of videos ago, I signed up with the Silver Needle to get the Country Cottage Needleworks Gingerbread Village series each month. Piece two came in. This is the Gingerbread Girl and Peppermint Tree. And it's just, I love that peppermint tree. That is just so cute. And here's the little button that came with it. Now the chart, which is for her, the chart does have it so you could chart, you could stitch the gingerbread girl if you want to instead. But it's so cute. I am waiting to collect all of these before I do it because I'll probably do it as one big piece. And then this one's going in my rotation. Someone else showed this on the Crazy January Challenge group and I saw that and I said, must have from Foxwood Crossings. It's called Stitch a Lot. It says, I am the queen of Stitch a Lot, reigning over my kingdom, bunch of stash. I stash, I stitch, I stitch, I stash, happy with my stitch stash cash. Hello. Are we surprised? I mean, seriously, really. And then the last one that came through was the December of uh, Prairie Schoolers monthly series because December is like out of print and they had to rerun a printing thing for it. So there's December. So that is it for Stash this week. Like I said, there were sales. I bought. Are we shocked? Mostly needle minders. A lot of those coming. But anyway, um, that's about it for me today. I hope everyone has, I'll be back tomorrow to do the stitch along updates. Other than that, I will be back on Sunday for my normal stitchy update and I will see you guys next time.